Okay, that's uh, College Mini Jordan. Welcome to everyone here. Now we have an addition to the agenda as a result of Committee of the Whole discussions, and we can put that under Committee Reports as uh, mentioned, and that's, I guess, item 6A under Committee Reports pertaining to the cannabis issue. Second. So, well, we just do. Okay. So as as amended there, I move and second to adopt the agenda. All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Uh, item 3A: Adoption of the uh, regular meeting minutes for uh, August 13th. Councillor Harrison moving. Second. Councillor Dival seconding. Questions or comments pertaining the minutes? All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 4A, we have uh, the Advantage Hope report. For last, we need to introduce Mr. Earl. Yes, uh, Mr. Patrick Earl, the uh, Director, Executive Director of Advantage Hope, is here to give the quarterly report. Uh, Q2. Yes. Q2. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, good evening, uh, Your Worship and Council. Um, I have Sarah also here, our uh, operations manager, to, to deliver a micro report on the visitor center as well. Um, but I want to start off with uh, talking about the second quarter. Um, it's uh, it was uh, another quarter of the, um, working on developing um, and working partnerships and assessing challenges. We've had uh, we've had a bit of a, a wild ride this year with uh, a little bit of transitioning um, with our board. And we, we went into addressing a few challenges related to retention and internal communication and work to develop uh, communication and, and messaging outwardly. So the, um, Q2 was one of those discovery uh, quarters. And uh, into Q3, we've been working on that. And um, I'll, I'll add some stuff in on that in a second. Uh, we had some we had some issue, issues addressing form, and we worked with uh, um, the CAO on on that along with the board to to look at ways where we could still conduct business, and we uh, we uh, modified form down to five, um, and we're able to do one meeting in Q2 on April 24th, but we had some issues doing form and beyond that, and we've had uh, in Q3 we've had another meeting too carry on and conduct business on that five. Um, so uh, we did prepare a meeting each month, but we, uh, we uh, had some issues with those quantum numbers. Um, through the communications committee, we also identified uh, that we need to work at a uh, cohesive and renewed message of what advantage hope is to stakeholders. So going through a communications workshop that I, that I conducted with uh, uh, with the, the board and some of our some of our staff and um, contractors, we we got about midway through the through the day and identified some challenges with Advantage Hope in the way of uh, identifying what we are as Advantage Hope. So uh, beyond that, we went into uh, a discussion of identifying our who, what, when, where, and why about the uh, the society and what we do and and what we promote. Um, and going through this little bit of a journey, we've also been able to, um, as going through and developing this, we've been able to, uh, to tell our story a little bit better and some of the consequences of that and some of the efforts behind that have helped us attract new board members. So uh, working on this message, I'll be, I'll be working through this into uh, Q3, working on it now and looking at defining Advantage Hope as a, its own corporate brand, using the community brand and other things as umbrellas underneath this so that we can do um, uh, our story of operating our purpose and stuff like that. And I think we can get a little bit more of a common message between board staff or contractors into working and talking with their stakeholders about what we do, how we can help them, um, and how we can do economic development in uh, in the district. Um, it also works for helping our partners. So this is one of the things, another indicator was we have really great relationship development into the region, um, which is pretty much something that I do, all, I, I do a, a lot of effort in. 
and we've had a lot of re good reception about it, what is a vantage hope within the, uh, into the region. Um, because I'm the one that's talking that message all the time. So um, by having some cohesion here locally, I think we'll be able to, you know, get our board members, um, get uh, our stakeholders working with business so that we all have the same kind of message. So we can talk investment attraction in one voice. We can talk tourism in another voice. We can talk community engagement. And then, like, these are all common voices. With common voices, I think we'll have a, little, a lot more clarity and uh, telling our story on what we do. So uh, the other thing is to is looking at, uh, since I got here, looking at all of our strategies. Our strategies are in these little containers, and these containers don't really connect. So when we look at community branding, um, when we look at the economic development strategy, these things, these things are all created at one moment in time, but they haven't really been tied together. So under the advantage of branding, it's where the brand will, will tie these together to make that common message. Um, and with that, I think our output's going to add value to these past strategies and, uh, and uh, initiatives. So, uh, and then into that, we worked on their mar marketing audit as well. And uh, that's still streamlining, and it will be through the year. Uh, working on something right now where we're looking on the tourism side, uh, working with Destination BC on cooperative marketing, where they're wanting to, when we, we look at cooperative marketing to BBC, they want to have more um, data for what we're doing on our marketing campaigns. Uh, so a lot of that comes through uh, success through digital. Digital always gives us great data where we can we can assess the efforts of our spending. And it's good for the it's good for the operators, it's good for anybody involved in our in our partnership marketing. So uh, working on um, the, the strategic direction of looking at the DMO, the Destination Marketing Organization of Hope Cascades and Canyons, which again fits under that advantage of branding umbrella. Uh, Hope Cascades and Canyons is directly tied to the efforts of the community branding that's already been done. Uh, and so uh, we're working on right now, uh, looking at stretching a, a, funding, a funding design that engages partners to work with other businesses in the district and in the region uh, to bring them on to do more community partnering or uh, partnering on um, basically uh, initiatives. So if, if an operator wants to do a marketing campaign, they work with hotels, restaurants, these other things. And by doing that, we have another way of engaging hotels, which ties into MRDT efforts and stuff like that where we've had challenges. So a lot of these things, if we start tying together all these initiatives and strategies that exist already, that we could probably have some better results on the initiatives we're having challenges with, like MRDT. Um, asset development, downtown business development, all of these things sort of play into to trying to make up all of our efforts cohesive. Um, and then uh, we can look at messaging through our tourism efforts on resident and business attraction because we start talking quality of life because that's what we promote in tourism. And uh, while addressing visitor experience, our asset development starts to tie together, like why are we involved through uh, real dividend on trail development. Trail development ties to the quality of life of the community and it's a marketing piece for promotion for business attraction and residents. Um, and with new residents and business owners, managers, they could also be future board members. So it's the idea of just looking at everything sort of flowing um, through, these, through these designs. Uh, we've uh, developed new investor packages in Q2 uh, and working on more robust and targeted content for these packages. Uh, related to business services, we have also become a Google Trusted Verifier and I'm waiting to uh, get approval back from Google on uh, a media release. Again, we're trying to do more media releases to promote what Advantage Hope is doing in the, in the community and in the region. Uh, this on-site verifying process eliminates the need for businesses to register online, uh, and we can basically verify them on-site now. So we've, we've, got a, we've got a tablet to do that. We just walk into a business, 
and if they're and if they're not or if they're not uh, on Google My Business, so they have that right hand sort of side screen on a desktop or full red at the top um, within the uh, within a listing. So if someone searches a business, it comes up immediately with a little photo and a map and all that stuff. We have the ability to approve that without it going to a postcard. Four weeks later, you get it back to Google. We can actually do it right there. And uh, we'll tie that in, of course, with the, uh, the business walk. Um, we'll, we'll try to get people verified on the business walk in the fall as well. Uh, let's see. Um, with our new partnership with the Fraser Valley Group in Chilliwack, we're with Chilliwack, Hattiesburg, and Harrison. We have worked on promoting hope as being part of the our conversation in Fraser Valley tourism development. Uh, it also provided us that, that partnership with uh, conversation to be part of the RBC Cup this year, and we conducted visitor services on site in Chilliwack for eight days, uh, provided direct, direct conversion of visitors during the eight-day event in May uh, to coming from Hope as far away as Ottawa and the U.S. Mid, US Midwest. Uh, we interact, interacted with visitors in Chilliwack and in many cases had additional conversations with those same people at the Hope Visitor Center. Plus, we also had the young Ottawa Senators come out to Hope, uh, the, the, one of the teams, and they did uh, kayaks and mountain bike rentals. So that, that was a direct result of that. We also, with that, with that uh, partnership with Chilliwack, we also hosted a couple of developers in a suite at the Puck Drop team where uh, Dusty did the puck drop. And we had Hope jerseys and everything done up in uh, uh, a Vancouver away jersey design, which is hard being an Oilers fan. Um, <laughs> but uh, with Hope Cascades and Canyons on these jerseys, and they turned out really great. Um, we're also going to have them available for order at the Visitor Center if you're interested. Uh, so, other highlights in the second quarter uh, attended the BC EDA Summit in Kelowna. Uh, my first, normally I've done Alberta EDA, but it was it was a great summit. Um, worked on securing some customer service uh, retail training program, which we got a day before we did customer service training up in Manning uh, this year, and we're now we're now modifying it to add it to to do retail customer service training. Um, this whole program that goes into what we're doing with free reign and uh, what we're also doing with regrade. And we'll use it for, for other uses too. So we have the full license on that. Uh, and it cost us nothing. So that was good. Uh, worked with Black Press on a digital marketing strategy. So we've done a lot of conversion from uh, print. We did print inserts into the Fraser Valley last year. This year we've done uh, a digital media, media campaign with uh, Black Press. And we've been marketing um, Hope Cascades and Canyons into Vancouver Island. Um, the, Greater Vancouver, uh, the Okanagan, and uh, the Edmonton Calgary corridor, just to see. We have a lot of traffic coming from Calgary, and so we're trying to identify why. So it's a it's an interesting thing. So uh, we developed a memorandum of understanding with Readwrite, and we will we'll work to make more MOUs a standard with our other partners when looking for fee for service activities. One of the things in the transition in is we have nothing really documented on agreements. So for us trying to figure out what those are, uh, we've just gone, we're doing standardized MOUs so that we understand with our fee-for-service what we're delivering and what we're getting paid to deliver. Um, developed and promoted the outdoor business market for the summer months of the visitor center. Uh, didn't go as great as I wanted it to go, but uh, we'll work on a better marketed model for 2019. I'm still confident that that thing uh, has legs and will work. Uh, the idea was well received, but more effort is needed. Uh, visitor numbers are slightly down, which Sarah will talk about, um, but the, the numbers aren't as down as other visitor centers in the province. Um, cooperative marketing grant for Destination BC came in lower by approximately 25% over the 2017-18 year due to more applicants across, across the province applying for the same level of funding. Um, and the marketing audit continues to looking at doing more for less with Hope Cascades and Canyons partners, partners and the DMO uh, rede redesign is, is uh, looking to, to fix that up. Um, and we work with 
district administration on services at the visitor center, getting the center ready for the usual busy summer season. And we're living at highlights. We have uh, um, the whole food and agriculture plan uh, is completed and ready for endorsement by council, we hope. And thanks to the members of the Volunteer and Agriculture Advisory Committee and our resource panel of experts for assisting in that important project. Uh, two new trails were constructed and tra new trail amenities installed in the backcountry this summer. And a new disc golf course has been installed. And we have a new infrared radar camera um, installed at the fellow tunnels and tracking visitor data. And this information will, uh, will be incredibly helpful to the identifying ways to manage traffic and parking, which has become a difficult situation. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Mr. Earl. I'll try and make this really quick. Um, Visitor Center was open for 628 hours in Q2. Uh, we've seen, as Patrick said, a small decrease in visitor numbers over the previous year. Uh, 11,438 visitors this year compared to 17,027 period last year. Uh, roaming visitor services, generally, we haven't done in the spring. Uh, but we did do some, uh, as Patrick said, at the RBC Cup. Um, so we, board volunteers, uh, Patrick, myself, Brian, uh, had made contact with 456 people uh, during that time period, many of whom did come to Hope. Uh, we did also have trail guides and visitor guides and that sort of thing available at our booth when it was on man, uh, so people could access uh, itineraries and things like that to come to Hope when chill out was very busy. Uh, services continued to migrate to our trailer during this quarter, uh, notably tying trailer into the subject system. Uh, additionally, a walk and handle were installed on the side door of the museum uh, so that staff can enter the museum from the side uh, where it's more easily accessible leaving the trailer. Uh, so you didn't have to walk all the way around the front of the building and then all the way through the building to get something from the museum. Uh, communities in Bloom planted some additional planters at the front of the trailer this year to uh, give the visitor center a more welcoming uh, appearance. We've gotten a bit of feedback that people didn't realize that was where they were supposed to go because it looked like a construction trailer. So we had some flowers hung out front and moved some signs uh, and got a, a more sort of homey feel for it. Um, Visitor Center hired three summer students. Uh, when I wrote this, they had just started uh, and now they're, have, they've almost completed their uh, training. We had interpreter, a brand ambassador, and a collections management assistant with a museum student. Uh, we've had, we had nothing but praise for them. It was a great, uh, a great experience for me, at least, to be working with them. Uh, we've purchased a new line of I Love Hope merchandise uh, to sell at the visitor center. Uh, these products have had a positive reception so far and seem to be selling well. Patrick already talked about the business market, but during uh, second quarter, eight businesses participated in the outdoor business market on one or more days. Uh, and we had seen uh, particular interest in the Canada Day of all weekend. Unfortunately, that weekend it rained almost all weekend, uh, but we did have uh, multiple businesses attend for at least part of the time on those days. Thank you. Question to I have to say that uh, uh, thank you, Council, for uh, giving us two new board members, and uh, we have one more up for consideration tonight. Sounds good. Thank you. I think it's not for any Okay. If it's pertinent, you're going to take it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what page are you referencing, Councilor? I just, um, I just have questions regarding the presentation. Okay. Um, the Rural Dividend Fund? Yep. Um, did that pay for the Frisbee golf course thing? Or did, how, how, who paid for the Frisbee? Well, that was us. Well, it's inside here saying it was, I just read it here. That was signage, I think. Exactly. Sure. It will provide counsel 
with an ass dog that goes yeah. through the road. We'll, we'll clarify Which that. Which page are you referencing here, Councilor? Uh, last page. The last page is on page 19. Okay. Uh, his application. The board has vetted him for his particular experience, qualifications, 
uh, desires as far as economic development and where he sees uh, certainly hope and the uh, region progressing to. It's interesting to note that uh, Mr. Steve Brack uh, works at Rona here, uh, an individual with a lot of experience and clearly uh, the board would value his uh, being a member uh, of the Advantage Hope Board. Uh, this would bring, if endorsed, uh, the board up to nine members of 11, so uh, clearly uh, they're moving forward as far as rebuilding and re-energizing. So this should be viewed as a very positive thing for Advantage Hope. Okay, sounds very good, sounds like a good person. Okay. All those in favor? Contrary, most curious. Now under committee reports, item 6A, we have a uh, uh, item here pertaining to our community of the whole discussion and for those in attendance here in the audience that were not at the community of the whole uh, meeting we had significant discussion about the uh, cannabis issue and uh, how that is going to uh, play out in our community there was discussion about uh, uh, how we're going to consult the republic as a council and uh, provide the uh, uh, district with uh, proper feedback to make uh, decisions here to suite and uh, maybe we could, uh, uh, Ms. Bellingham, reread the motion or read the motion that was uh, passed at the committee of the whole meeting and see if it has uh, the appetite of council to pass it again here. That staff be directed to proceed with the atmosphere survey for retail sale of cannabis as they've got it presented with two additional questions. Those being, are you a business or a resident taxpayer? And do you support additional costs towards by law enforcement? Uh, mover and second here. Okay, Councillor Kraut moving. Second. Councillor Dyble second. All those in favor? Councillor carries. Thank you. Uh, under seven, uh, Mayor and Council reports. I'd like to congratulate uh, uh, the uh, participants of the Right to Conquer Cancer. Of course, that congratulations rolls out to uh, all of the uh, local participants, but I think. Since three of our FIT uh, locals are in attendance, Councillor Bob Erickson, uh, Ms. Donna Bellingham, and Mr. John Fordowski, uh, congratulations to the three of you. You're uh, obviously very fit because you're not walking funny, and that was finished yesterday. So I guess you're, you're used to this kind of heavy activity. Biking 160 k in two days is not a big deal, I guess. So, But uh, the, the ride, I understand. So over 211 and 90. Which is that, sir? 111 on the first day and 916 and 96. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Over 200. Yeah, more than the right leg. So that's that's pretty impressive. And um, I guess the ride itself uh, raised how much? Over $10 million? Wow. So that's impressive for the cause of uh, going towards curing cancer and also helping with uh, respite. Uh, and hospice care for uh, cancer victims, so that's awesome. Uh, as I think the community is well aware, there, uh, there was a bit of a hiccup as far as the final destination of the ride. The plan was to finish in Hope, but due to the, the um, fire on Highway 7 and the fact that uh, highways could not uh, allow uh, unobstructed traffic flow if the ride was to move forward, and there were also some safety concerns identified uh, for the riders that and the organizers of the ride to conquer cancer are not comfortable with, but the plan is to stay the course for the next few years and the final destination will be Hope. And there's obviously something inherently great about finishing Hope when you're riding to uh, support the cause of uh, curing cancer. And I was able to go to Chilliwack and uh, talk to the organizers and thank them for all the good work they did. So uh, unfortunately it didn't happen here though. So good for Chilliwack and I uh, look forward to seeing them next year. Uh, last week attended the um, Library Reading Awards uh, service for the Fraser Valley Regional Library. We have a lot of uh, young and old, uh, young and older folks here that uh, read very actively in the summer and uh, it was always, it's always a lot of fun to attend those and give out the awards on behalf of the Regional Library Board. It's, uh, it's funny to watch the different, the different young people and how they receive their awards. Some. Uh, some are very reluctant participants in the whole award service and others feel like they just won the Olympics. They <laughs> come up there and they probably display their medal and it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty cool thing to watch. And of course, special thanks to all the parents and uh, grandparents, aunts and uncles and whatever that support the young people through the summer. 
encouraging to read. And, uh, and also there's a very, uh, very good staff, as everyone knows, at the Regional Library. And there's a very good Friends of the Library group as well. And I think I'll pick on Teresa Williams as one of them, because I see her there all the time. So she must be there all the time, and she's involved in so many things. So I guess just to pick on someone that does a lot in our community, special thank you to her for all the good work she does. And um, had the opportunity to participate in a soap opera, believe it or not. Mr. Gill was there. There's a, a, a soap opera that's being filmed in Hope, and they wanted to interview the mayor and talk about this fictional restaurant called Michelle's. And they interviewed me, and uh, we did, a, like I think, three or four takes. So I guess it's their call if I, if I look capable in there or look ridiculous, but uh, I leave my future in their capable hands. Uh, it was fun to meet the, the, the cast and the crew of that uh, production, and. Uh, Actually, the main actress there, she used to be a federal government employee, so she kind of changed career focuses in a big way there. And I thought it was worthwhile uh, participating in that and supporting them because they were spending money locally. And, it, and within, the, um, uh, within the little soap opera segments, they're actually talking about Hope BC. It's actually in our community and the, the welcome signs and so on will be profiled in different scenes in the community. So I think it's kind of a nice bit of free advertising for Hope by uh, it's a good thing when the films, uh, when filming comes to hope, and I know that the uh, the comments back from the crew and the, uh, the uh, actor and actress that I talked to, they said uh, hope has been very good to work with. Uh, the men and staff have been very good, and uh, the red carpet staff definitely rolled out for them. So I think that's kind of a nice reputation for us to maintain, and uh, and I guess that ties in nicely with something I wanted to mention about uh, the men, staff, and council here as well. I've had a lot of comments over the last couple of months from uh, business people who work with the district and developers and people expanding their homes or uh, making significant alterations that demand district input. And the feedback has been very positive, so I'd like to thank you know admin and council for for being uh, business friendly to the community and, and helping out and making it a, as pleasant an experience as possible. And um, the other thing is, of course, as everyone knows, the election's coming up, so there is an orientation session coming up September the 4th, 6.30 here. Is it 5th or 4th? 5th. Okay. Uh, is it the 5th? Double check. It's the 5th, 6.30. Okay, good. Uh, September the 5th at 6.30, and I, I, rumor has it there'll even be coffee on. Uh, so uh, feel free if you have any interest in participating in the election, it'll be a good orientation for folks that are keen on running for uh, mayor, council, uh, and um, I think school board is probably putting on a separate one, I would assume, or, or maybe not, okay, maybe not, but same four-year term, so um, definitely I think it would be valuable, particularly for people who haven't been involved yet, to sort of a Coles Notes version of what you're going to be experiencing if you uh, run and become elected, and I certainly like to encourage anyone that has a hankering to to run for office, either a mayor, councillor, or school board, to put their name out there. And uh, I certainly, uh, for, for the position I'm running for again, I, I, I love competition, so the more the merrier. And uh, I'm sure all the council feels the same way, because it's nice to have choices for the community. And, uh, you know, the more diverse the choices, uh, the more the public can speak as to what they're looking for. So um, that's good news all around. So maybe we'll start under councillor's reports with Councillor Crop today. Thank you. I really don't have much to report. I'd just like to say um, thank you to the, the town crew again. They're really working at keeping everything tidy. Every morning we walk our dog and every morning there's just a mess everywhere in the park and everything. I just can't believe it. But by the time we make our next round, it's all picked up again and staff are busy, busy. It's a lot of work and I wish people would be a little more, more respectful of our community. I know it's not our locals. So it's a little disheartening, but anyhow, I'm glad they're here. People are here, so that's one good thing. And um, glad to see our mountains. They were painted back into my vision this morning when I woke up. <laughs> and uh, our smoke uh, air quality is uh, back to fairly normal, so it's not significant like it was. And hang in there, people. The summer is just about coming to a close. I just want to remind people that the little kids are starting to get antsy. They're going to go back to school, so keep your eyes and your ears open. Driving. That's it. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'd like to just put a little report in for the right to cancer for cancer. It was actually uh, very exciting. 
Uh, we left Hope at 4.30 in the morning Saturday with uh, four bikes in the back, and uh, we got there around 6 o'clock or 6.30, something like 6 o'clock, I guess it was. The amount of people coming in was unbelievable. We had so many cars and bikes, and we started out about 7.30 Saturday morning, and it hadn't, didn't rain yet. We got about a half an hour in, and it started to rain, and basically rain the whole time. Uh, Saturday, um, the ride was actually, I really enjoyed that ride. I think it was 100, I think mine said 115, my, my spin arm said about 150. But I, and there were about, I had different reports between 2,200 riders and 3,400 riders. I didn't get the number of reports, but there were a lot of riders. Wow. And getting out of the gate was a real challenge. Yeah, the roads blocked off. And and uh, I was, all, myself, I'm talking about, I was always worried about crashing if somebody comes in front of me or, so I pulled off to the side and I just headed up. And, uh, but what was really exciting about the riding guys is that when you're riding, you'll see some of these young guys come flying by you. And, and yet I think I was going pretty good, but, but they would go by you and they'd come up and say, hey, Bob, you're from Hope. How come we're not riding into Hope? I said, well, fire. Next year we will. I'm looking forward to seeing the mountains. We said many, many people went by you that way. Say, yeah. After if I go by, somebody would stop and talk about it would be nice to be riding on the Hague Highway instead of all these back roads. But it was very enjoyable the first day. And the second day, I was a little bit worried. I didn't tell John this, but I was a little bit worried if I'm going to be strong enough to ride. I got on the bikes and it rained, started raining at 7 o'clock and it rained the whole time. Really rain when we were back in on Camper Road. Really rain, so we were all wet. And the thing that happened, my wife was such a clean freak, she washed my jacket Saturday night, not realizing it ruined it, my rain jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so, Saturday morning, Saturday morning, I put it on and I could feel the rain coming through. Yeah. Oh, you no. Know. And I was thinking I was going to ride with John and Donna to take it slow. No way. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be frozen. <laughs> so I just took off again and I. Um, but it was really exciting, you guys, if you ever want to have an exciting time. Yes, we had to endure, you know, it was tough riding at some spots. Um, but you see everybody riding, they're all positive. Everybody was positive. I didn't hear anybody complaining about the rain. We just went through realizing that there's a lot of people suffering with cancer that are suffering a lot worse than what we're going through. Um, this morning I got up and I said to Wendy, well, should I go for a bike ride? I felt really good. I didn't feel stiff at all, but I felt pretty good. So I enjoyed it immensely. And Donna, I want to thank you so much for helping us put it all together, keeping us all informed, and putting the team together, and the jersey, and everything. Really appreciate it. And John, do you want to hold up the medallion? All of us that completed it got a medallion. Um, yeah, it was really nice. There were some groups of 360 people in the group, some clubs. <laughs> And they were really, really organized. They would come through maybe 50 at a time, just streaming by you. And then there'd be some that I'd be passing that are a little slower. But they're all in their 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 um, ability stage. And it was really fun to talk to them. I, I'm so glad I did for the district. I'm so glad I did. And I think next year, I was thinking this morning, I would have loved to ride to Hope this morning with the beautiful weather. Think of all the energy you had and that sun shining in your face coming on the Hague Highway into town. It would have been just glorious. Glorious for hope. So I'm looking forward to next year riding. Um, so that's about it, unless anybody has any questions regarding the ride. It was a very successful. They were so organized. You never missed any turns. Every turn was marked. The mileage was marked as you're going. What, every 10 kilometers they marked? And they had places where if you had a flat tire, people would come by and help you. I think Anna had a flat tire and they fixed her tire for her. Uh, so it was it was very well organized. Just like, what do you think, John? It was excellent with that. Do you think everything was organized? It was it was well organized and um, I have to say, Your Worship, um, that they did a very good job at the last minute to to change the route, have all the traffic control uh, in place, but also mark the really hard spots in the road where there were dangerous cyclists. They were all spray painted so they actually slowly walk the route. And on, some, and on some real tough corners, they had people standing there saying, slow down, there's gravel on the corner. Because if you're going fast on a corner of gravel, you can spin out. A couple of people did. 
there were a couple accidents, but nothing really major that we know. But uh, um, there were quite a few flat tires. But I thought they were organized very, very, very well. And it was uh, an honor to be a participant in the um, One other question, John, I have regarding, I mean, this goes to Kevin, um, regarding the Tourist Information Center. I went by there today. Are we going to do anything to rebuild the old one for a period of time? You know, we spent quite a bit of money. I'd like to know how much we spent on the existing site. But it would be really nice if we have, could have something maybe back in that building, remodel it or some, put some money into it. I don't know what, what the plans were. Well, I mean, I think right now it's probably something that needs to be discussed at that budget time, looking into 2019 as to what direction we're going to go with regards to that building. Because I think the tourist information has something better than what they have right now. Personally, I think so. Maybe next council. <coughs> I'm just wondering if we should start actively looking some remodel in there to fix it up so that it's presentable, so it's something that's nice and presentable to people who come to visit home. Because going into a little trailer <coughs> is not something that I think would be nice for home. I think we should think about it. Well, I, I think the other thing that, that's a bit of a variable at this point, we have the ongoing discussion, negotiation, legal claim against the province of BC for not, not um, following through on their commitment to pertaining to the station house property. So until we figure out how that pans out, it might be a little premature to spend a lot of money on the existing, uh, you know, the personal thing. Just, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's a valid point. It'd be nice to have something that's a little more impressive than a, than a you know, although the portable is a nice shape, it's just yeah. an new, but, but it, yeah, it's not the, not the best image for the community. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, I don't think there's any thought that it's going to be beyond the next, next year. Kind of that's all I have to report. <coughs> can, I, can I just uh, thank you? Can I just comment on that? Um, our portable is pretty nice, actually. Um, Merritt has nothing anymore, really much. They have a, a wrapped little kiosk, a very tiny wrapped kiosk. And so what we have is like the Taj Mahal. So I don't think we should be too worried about that at this point. We're still in pretty good shape. Councilor Miller. Uh, again, the financial meeting I'll be attending tomorrow. Um, I think last time I reported that we were going to have our Hope Floats Festival at Cockle Lake, so I guess thank you to staff for, I was expecting to go down there and see a little pile of goose poop, but there was no geese and no poop. The park looked good. Uh, it was a small community, but we still filled it up with it was a 265 people, I think, so our goal was to get 250 people down there. We reached that goal. Not everybody was out on a flow, but it was still a lot of fun, so we're going to grow that event in the future. Uh, but it was nice to see in the last two, you know, three weeks, I guess. One weekend we were at the park along World, and the next weekend we were at Aqua Lake. It's nice to see the parks getting used for events like that, so mm -hmm. it's good. It's a lot of reports, a lot of floating islands out there. Flying <laughs> <laughs> around. Yeah, flying around. That was good. Like that. Impressive. Oh, no. That was low hanging fruit. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I attended another meeting at Telecom. We continue to work towards possible housing for people with developmental disabilities. And um, it was really a discussion about a two and a half hour meeting. Um, and the next one is coming on September 25th. They really would like to see um, Dr. Erickson or Councillor Erickson and the editor uh, be able to attend. They understand that Thursdays are very difficult. So. Um, it's on Monday, Tuesday. Okay. Can you email me? Yes, I can. Yeah, it was triple book. Yes, I, yeah, and they understand that, <laughs> and so they're, they're just playing with some dates. And, yeah. And I also had dinner with our MLA, Jeff Tender, and a uh, really nice back and forth there, and talked about the housing for people with developmental disabilities, and a couple other key issues around the community, and. It was kind of nice, it was informal, and, and it was very free conversation, so I enjoyed that, at 293 Wallace Street, and, and it was uh, a very nice. So, um, coming up, we have um, the Golden Majors. We're not going to meet again before um, September 24th, so 
Um, the Golden Ager's next meeting is on the 18th of September, if anybody would like to attend. And um, also the Advantage Gold meeting is tomorrow night. And I think that's all I have. Good. Um, I just wanted to congratulate the riders um, that did the, the ride. Uh, quite an accomplishment. I know that uh, one of my employees had trained, and I think she's been training since February. I don't know, Anne, is that about right? Yeah. yeah, three or four days a week. So a uh, big commitment for, you know, a vast amount of time. So I uh, really want to congratulate everybody for that. And yeah, too bad it wasn't in hope, but hopefully next year um, the weather or uh, the smoke and uh, will impact that ride. And I also want to um, you know say I appreciate the local firefighters and the um, forestry firefighters. It's been quite the season, and we've endured the smoke and the the smell, um, but it's nothing compared to what's going on in other parts of the province. So just want to uh, acknowledge what is happening. Uh, that's it. Okay, and I just want to finish off a couple of things that I have to include here. Um, we have a number of folks in our community that fight fires for a living, and without getting into the, the you know person by person, I'm not sure I'll miss someone, but I think we all appreciate the contributions that they uh, make to, to our surroundings to keep us safe, and also a lot of them obviously have had to travel uh, out of town to make contributions there wherever the need was, so that's a good thing. Uh, just tying into what Councillor Stewart said pertaining to the MLA meeting with Jackie Taggart, I was able to be there as well, and uh, just like to, you know, publicly thank uh, MLA Taggart for, for being here. She is very easy to get a hold of, and although she doesn't have an office in every community she serves, she is a, a pretty easy person to get a hold of, and uh, the cool part about uh, uh, her is she has good good relations with folks in the NDP, so although her sort of party flag is liberal, she, she's very good at generating positive relationships with people from the Green and NDP as well. So she will be uh, hopefully able to attend all our UBCM ministerial meetings and any time of year at the UBCM, she's uh, committed to making herself available if possible. Of course, there's other communities that uh, that will have meetings that may be at the same time, so I guess she'll have to pick and choose as to where she can be most useful. But I certainly encourage anyone that has any comments to her to give her a call because she is pretty easy to get a hold of, although there's no local office. Uh, and um, I guess that's it. And, and one of the things, uh, although I'm publicly thanking and acknowledging Raymond Louie, uh, Council Member of Vancouver, probably won't do anything because I'm assuming he does not watch. Uh, District of Hope Council meetings, that's probably a fairly worthy assumption, but um, I had a chance to bump into him when I visited the right to conquer cancer on, on Saturday, and um, I was uh, quite surprised when I heard he was not um, you know, rerunning for council because he's one of the hardest working people I've ever met, and um, I asked him, I said, what's going on, you bored of politics? Or, he says, well, I'm going to take a little family time, and it's, it's no big secret. He had he had a, a bout with cancer, and they had to deal with, uh, took part of his one lung out, and so he's taking some family time. He looks amazing, and uh, he's doing well, but we just thought it was uh, good to invest a little little time in, you know, family. And uh, I just thought it was pretty amazing that he had, had a recent operation, and uh, he rode in a uh, ride. Pretty impressive. Although he said the air quality almost shut him down, he said I was tempted to bail here for for a bit because the rain helped. Yeah, the rain did help. So, anyways, yeah, thank you all. And 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 John's here as well, another writer. So, yeah, almost didn't see it behind the seat, but yeah, congratulations to you. You're in the top one percent of fit people in Hope, it appears. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have uh, Mayor and Council reports out of the way. So item eight a. Moving along, uh, zoning amendment bylaw 1436 2018. Uh, pertaining to a public hearing we had tonight, uh, recommendation that District of Hope zoning amendment bylaw uh, 1436 uh, 2018 be read a third time in order to increase the maximum site coverage permitted in the commercial transition C5 zone for one family residence from 35% density to 45% density. Motion that effect is okay. Moved and seconded. 
Councillor Erickson and Councillor Blad what we're doing. A bit of a tie game there. Questions or comments from Council? All those in favor? Thank you. And then we have a report from uh, Mr. Gill here pertaining to an application to amend the text of an R1 zone to rezone the property at 755 Oval Princeton Way for the MQHS Housing Society. Uh, motion is as follows. There's two of them. I'm going to remove myself from this as it has, um, I've had some connection with them with my work and don't want there to be a perceived conflict of interest. Okay. That's very good of you. Thank you. So first recommendation that the District of Hope Official Community Plan Bylaw number 1434-2018 be given first and second readings in order to redesignate the property legally described as 755 Old Hope Princeton Way from highway commercial to urban suburban residential and further that the public be notified in accordance with the District of Hope application procedures and the public hearing information reading procedure bylaw number 1393 the Hope Government Act and the Community Charter and further that, the Council of the District of Hope has considered the duty to consult regarding the OCP uh, Amendment Bylaw Number 1434-2018 and concurs with the Director of Community Development that consultation be undertaken with the uh, Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure, the District of Hope Director of Finance, and the uh, District of Hope Director of Operations. Motion that effect. Okay, Councillor Stewart, thank you. Councillor Medlock seconding. Questions or comments? I have a question. Uh, actually, that's uh, at this point is reserved to uh, the uh, council. But there will be a public comment component at the end. So, mm -hmm. yes, Councilor. Um, so I have a question regarding the infrastructure in the area. Is the infrastructure, uh, especially downstream, capable of handling that? Perhaps I can respond to this. Um, there is no building code requirement to have a ladder truck, for example. You just have to in place automatic sprinklers. There is no BC fire regulation that mandates, for example, a ladder truck. And in fact, um, if you look at uh, Harrison Hot Springs, they have a seven-story hotel, no ladder truck. It's not mandated. And a fire, a uh, a ladder truck, as I understand it, uh, the primary use for that is for the distribution of water at high elevations, high angles, and it is a useful, but albeit uh, ancillary use, to use it for rescue uh, in a high spot. So to summarize, um, you may not wish to consider or let it enter your considerations that we don't have a ladder truck because, quite frankly, we're not mandated to have one. Okay, can I yeah. Yeah. We're not currently mandated to have one, right? But what happens five years down the road? then we'd be in a similar boat with a lot of other municipalities, smaller, medium sized, uh, that have buildings, four stories and higher, but don't have ladder trucks. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Councillor Erickson, Councillor Middle. I'm remembering a conversation from the hotel development at Oakland Princeton Highway there, and the fire chief's comments on that was that that building would actually be safer than if it was different, three story, for example, had pressure, uh, pressurized air wells, fire stations in every floor, sprinkler. Uh, the biggest concern was fire hazard in the construction of the building, not so much when it was completed. 
So I hope that's the same with this. That's what Jen's shaking his head. So I assume from a fire safety standpoint, the DC building code looks after that. Okay. So this will be um, a sprinkler system then. Stairwells will be fireproof for safety reasons. And I do worship you. Yes, the uh, architect would have to design to be building code. And, and those requirements would have to be met. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion on the table. All those in favor? Thank you. And for those in attendance, there'll be plenty of opportunity for public consultation and feedback on this because this is the start of the process. So lots of time for that. And then uh, second recommendation that the uh, District of Hope Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1435-2018 be given first and second readings in order to amend section 10.5, the RM1 zone, subsection 10.5.5, table 19, to include a new column for apartment or senior housing and other multiple building structures combined and rezone the property legally described at 755 Oval Prince Way from hybrid commercial C2 to multiple family RM1. And further that, the uh, public be notified in accordance with the District of Hope application procedures and public hearing information uh, meeting procedure bylaw number 1393, the Government Act, and the uh, Community Charter. Okay. Moved. Second. Seconded. All those in favor? Contrary. Motion is carried. And comment through to staff that that, that one uh, uh, procedural bylaw. We got it. Sexy up that name a little bit because one day my tongue is just going to twist into something. I don't know why. So that's a tongue twister that they proportion. Got to change that name. Okay, item C. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get it back here. That's not, that's not a little chance for that. Okay, item C, a report from our director from development, Mr. Gill, regarding a rail and highway service corridor development permit the variance at 62890 Flood Hope Road uh, for M. Salter and Care Properties, Kerr Properties, I guess it's a proper pronunciation. And uh, Mr. Gill, you could just introduce this and then we'll throw a couple motions in the table. Okay. Uh, Your Worship, through you, the applicant is proposing a multi phase development in which Multiple buildings will be constructed for the purpose of storage, uh, in brackets RV and boat storage is probably the primary thing, and service and sale. The applicant is wanting to take advantage of Hope's uh, situational hub. We understand that storage in the bigger urban centers has become limited, especially for RV storage, and BC's interior is a popular place for most holiday makers. Further, a sanding dump, wash bay, and propane service will also be available on the site. This proposal is intended to be a one-stop shop for people looking to have their RVs in both service and also stored when not in use. This proposal is unique in the fact that the customers will be able to empty and clean their units before putting them into storage and also to pull them out of storage and prepare for their uh, travel uh, on site. Uh, the property in question is about 15.50 acres in size. It's the property next to the Flying J uh, and then in front of it is two other highway commercial zone properties I believe one's the Thunderbird, uh, and then uh, the access is off of uh, a former restaurant site, uh, and uh, so what's been asked here is basically within the highway commercial zone, um, there's a height requirement um, for, for, the, uh, for the actual storage unit. Uh, in order to have this in RV stored, they need a higher height envelope, and so uh, there's a variance being request as part of this development permit. Um, overall, the site and situation uh, substantially meets the guidelines of the development permit. Okay. So there's a couple of motions here on the agenda that Council's observed. So I'll read out the first one, recommendation number one, that the uh, Rail and Highway Service Corridor Foreman Character Development Permit be issued for the property legally described at 62890 Flood Hope Road to enable the owner to proceed with the construction of storage buildings for boats and RVs, and further that the Director of Community Development be authorized to approve minor changes to the development permit 
And further that, uh, for purposes of the development permit validity period, the conditions of the development permit shall expire on August 27th, 2020. And further that, for the purposes of Section 504 of the Local Government Act, substantial start shall mean the uh, placement of the foundation uh, for any of the contemplated structures. And further that, the uh, Director of Community Development be authorized to endorse the development permit and associated documents. Motion that effect, please. So moved. Okay, moved and seconded. Councillor Dybel and Councillor Erickson. Um, sounds like some good uh, employment opportunities coming up here. Move forward. Okay, and Councillor Erickson, Councillor Stewart. Uh, so, you, I have a question regarding the access of the property. I was over there, there's no real road access right now. Um, I couldn't find it unless. Your worship for you uh, attaches the uh, map and I can yeah. sort of come over to uh, sure. Councillor Erickson here. would have to meet an engineer spec uh, and as part of that spec they, there should be any sort of contamination that should occur. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councilor Mello. Yeah, just to talk about the fire safety aspect again, you know, Flying G has that pond for access to the fire department if there's ever a fire at their site, but what's the situation across the road there or down the property there? Um, you know, probably steel buildings and all that, but a lot of fuel in the full of RVs and boats and propane systems and things like that. Right? It ultimately comes down to the storage and what type of storage is taking place in there. Um, the difference between the two properties is the fact that the Flying J has an assembly use, which is a, now a requirement of the code to have some sort of fire suppression system like an hydrant nearby. Uh, in this case, there is no occupant load in the sense of it's going to be an assembly use more for the storage. Um, ultimately, we would want some sort of engineer from, or some sort of opinion from an engineer to sort of confirm what the fire suppression system would be. It's going to be similar to you know, the shop that's going eventually down by the Chevron card lock. You know, it's steel building, vehicle storage. They had to come up with some sort of solution as well, right? So that's that's correct. Does that get considered in the whole uh, process? You can look at the storage that's taking place on the other side. Yeah, sure, Jamie. Yeah, sure. And at one point, there was a requirement in the bylaw for it to be hydrant, to have an hydrant on site, but it's no longer like that anymore. Um, it's basically they would have to prove it through an engineer uh, equivalency. Okay. Okay. Okay, Councillor. Is there any possibility of having town access to water there by putting the water line in, or is that too far away? Because the line J didn't access it. Uh, your Worship, through you, um, there is no water uh, in the area, uh, but we're aware that there is sufficient groundwater uh, there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Motion's on the table. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Recommendation two that the um, Council approved the preparation of the development variance permit DP to uh, vary the 
maximum interior height uh, requirement of a mini storage facility from 3.5 meters, 11 feet to 5.5 meters, 18 feet, and also vary the maximum unit area of a mini storage facility from 28 to square meters to 82 square meters for the uh, property described at 62890 Floodhope Road to enable the owner to proceed with construction of a uh, RV and boat storage buildings. Uh, and further that, in accordance with the District of Hope Development Procedures Bylaw of the Local Government Act, the Community Charter authorized staff to issue notice of intent to consider the approval of the DVP to the neighboring property owners and the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. And further that, uh, for the purposes of Section 504 of the Local Government Act, substantially started uh, shall mean the replacement of a foundation uh, for any of the contemplated structures. A motion to that effect. So moved. Councilor Kraut moving. Seconder. Okay. Councillor Erickson. Councillor Medlock, commenting. Yeah, the, the drawings we have here are far too small to read, and I couldn't pull them up, make them clear on my computer. But the 18 foot, that or 5.5 meters, that's to the peak of the of the roof. Is that where that's measured, or is it the average height of the roof? So it's actually taller than that. We're going to call upon the applicant to sort of provide more insight on that. It, it's that's to the underside of the truss inside the, uh, the storage unit. Yes, uh, the actual height of the uh, units are about 13 feet below the uh, the bylaw. So it's just to allow for a little more height of the site. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to point one more item for council's purposes. There will be fill brought to the site. So uh, as you can see, the difference between elevation the flying J and the parcel. Uh, it's not going to be as substantial, I believe. I think it's more towards the south, towards the highway. Yeah. Big project if it moves ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks for working at home. Boy, lots of locals if it, uh, if it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Just one more uh, comment for, for Council's information. Um, previously spoke about sanitary sewer. Sanitary sewer on Flood Hope Road terminates just west of Flying J at the moment. So in order to service this property, it would require me an extension. Uh, I know I did get a call from, from the developer's engineers uh, to discuss, and we'll get further discussions about that. And uh, I'm sure we can, can work through that with them. Yeah, okay. okay. Sounds very good. Okay, motion's on the table. All those in favor? Thank you. On A correspondence, motion to proceed, please. Councillor Kraut, moving. Seconder. Councillor Erickson, seconding. All those in favor? Contrary. Motion carries. And we have a uh, question period for items relevant to the agenda. Hello. Yeah, well, um, it sounds like we're good. Um, Floodhope Road is a Four stories, once again, uh, shouldn't we go wider instead of higher? Well, I think our, our chronic problem in Hope is we have a land shortage and we have a housing shortage. So over time, densification is kind of the name of the game, unfortunately. If we had more land, we would probably be a little more open-minded to looking at uh, keeping it nice and flat and low, but uh, that's just not, mm -hmm. we want our community to be healthy and we need to have more housing opportunities. Yes, we do, but what, at what cost, right? Like, as I said previously, before we even started, uh, we don't have stores. If people move in with kids, we don't have schools because school district just took down one building and actually we are, you know what I noticed actually on my tax assessment? The school was torn down, what, two, three years ago? But the taxes for the school remained the same at 162,000, and I wonder why. But I was already told to approach the school district about that one. I nothing changed with that. Like we are one school less, but the taxes are still the same. And I want. Okay, if you have anyway, a comment, but to... um, and my other thing was about selling the um, cannabis. Somebody said that it should not be sold in health food store because children go there. 
what basically came to my mind was when we used to have DVD store, there was a section where children were not allowed for one very specific reason, and the same could be applied for sale of cannabis in a health food store. Okay, what I would suggest there, we will have a uh, public uh, questionnaire and an opinion piece here so we can you know, mm -hmm. seek out opinions of the public and that will be a great time to put down your okay. comments there and then we can okay. definitely review those. Thank you very much. I just wanted to point out that uh, there will be a separate, there will be a division in my store. <laughs> it won't be Treehouse Health Foods, it'll be a cannabis retail outlet and there will, my store will be completely renovated to have a completely separate section. So there will be no uh, mixing of the two. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. A motion to uh, close the open meeting and head into the uh, closed meeting. Okay. Second. Oh, sorry, uh, I just have one comment uh, from Shannon Jones, our, our board member with the Bannon Show. She wanted to say that um, one of the benefits of the RBC Cup is that um, our involvement in it resulted in a thousand dollar donation to the Silver Creek Elementary to put towards their playground fund and completing the Lions Club Challenge and turning 1000 into 5000 I just wanted to bring that up. That's good, yeah, maybe make sure that uh, Ms. Peacock from the editor of the Hope Standard knows about that as well. You bet. be nice to broadcast that out. Worried about her, unless she attends here, hope she's okay. Um, okay, we'll maybe take a couple minute break here and then we'll have them be in camera. We have a few land labor legal issues to deal with.